Austin Men's Development, what is happening? So we're on our rebuild call, we're at the tail end of it, and there were a couple things that really came into discussion. And this is the virtues of serving, of what it means to deliver, what it means to be of service to other people, help people. This, this is really what my job is, what Austin Men's Development is about. But then this conflict that happens within our industry that is capitalistic, that takes advantage of this situation of people in pain, men in pain, women in pain, people trying to lose weight, people trying to get better you know, health, people trying to date women, and just completely exploiting this phenomenon that we have in society of tremendous amounts of pain and not really serving other people and not being helpful. I want to talk about the importance, the, the devout, amazing importance of what it means to be of service to others and why that is huge and in the balance of what capitalism is. You know, I'm a capitalist. It's important for me. It's the society and world that I live in and uh, how we can do that right. It's a tough topic. Tough topic. Let's get started. So when we talk about serving others, right? When we talk about this, when you talk about like what signed you up for this free board and this is a live stream on the AMD or wherever you're watching this, what you came to, to do as a man, if you came with pain, if you came with wanting to better yourself, if you came with, you know, trying to rebuild something, these are amazing qualities of a man. And, and let's take away the, the economic side. Let's take away the the kind of like social pizzazz of it, of like watching like some superhero on Instagram doing something. And let's get into like you, of what that means, this personal journey of you benefiting yourself. And I was talking about this with a female friend of mine. We both work with addicts and she also works with people that, uh, that have way insane problems. She works in social work. And we were talking about this service, right? This service of others, where in her situation, addict, volunteer, social work paid by a third party, not by the person asking for help. And these people that really need help in the worst ways and, and just some very tough situations. And when I think about myself helping people with addiction all, all for free, um, sometimes actually it's not true, sometimes I well work in rehab situations, but not my main source of income and the money is not, um, you don't do that for the money, right? Let's just put it that way. And there, that situation too, not being paid by the clients, but being paid by the business entity. This is where service can really shine bright, right? And this is one of the most amazing things. When you can see somebody change, decide, take to, to be willing to change, to have the, the motivation to be something better and to believe in something and you can be there to help guide them. And, and it's very clear that you're not a god, you, you're not trauma bonding with them, you know, that, that phenomenon may happen, meaning there's like this big, huge, massive thing of like, like, uh, like, wow, you made this breakthrough through like massive trauma, sexual trauma, violent trauma, whatever with them. And, and they're bonding with you. This is a trauma bond or, or like I share my experience with those things, but it gets back. It gets normalized. There's no idolization. There's no worship in that. It, it, if anything, in that moment, of when somebody makes that decision to start working on their lives and then you start helping them on their lives, there, there's a human to human interaction where you're both equal. And that's an amazing thing. It's one of the most amazing things of truly being of service to others. What's interesting is we don't see this phenomenon in the coaching industry. Now I'm a coach, I've done it for almost 15 years now, right? Taking money from people it, it, it in a way where it can be more profitable. Don't get me wrong, like rehab work can be profitable if you own the rehab. Um, and, and that gets exploited all over the place, whole different discussion. But in, in my work, you know, I can ask for a lot of money. I can make a living, I can make a good living off of this. Yet what I see so much in the coaching industry is not this idea. And, and I see the back end of it. I know a lot of these people and so on, is I see this idea of just helping enough to maintain an image that's gonna get more people to look at me so that I can grow bigger and then say I help more people. Yet, what I see with a lot of coaches, and this isn't true for all of them, but it's, it's damn near all of them, and there's few exceptions, right? Is what I see is guys helping thousands and thousands of people get over a bad day or these types of things, but not real breakthroughs in people's lives, yet 
the idolatry goes further. Like this sense of worship, the sense of them being amazing, the sense, this image of them being awesome. The, and, and whatever that is, whatever the culture says the hero looks like, that person becoming. And, and, it, and it's really disturbing, right? So there, there's a, a post that I was making and I have to rewrite it um, just for like one of those quick Instagram image things that I put up or on Facebook. But it says, I'm gonna paraphrase. Like I said, I gotta rewrite it. But it, it talks about this, this idea that we are a culture that is in love with showing off our own self-hate. And that's what we try and follow. And what I mean by that is, is I may hate my image of self so much that I'm gonna be a superhero. That's my reaction to me feeling weak. I'm gonna do the opposite of being weak and I'm gonna find strength in the image of strength. Not go into my weakness, not go into my pain, not go into the, the thing of saying like, well, let me come to terms with this weakness. Let me come to terms with myself. Let me come, come to terms with the subconscious and psychological and belief parts of me saying I can't do it and then learning how to do it. I'm gonna suppress the idea that I could be weak because that's bad, that's gonna hurt me, that's gonna make me not get a girlfriend, make me not gonna get a job, that's gonna make me not get this and that. And I'm gonna go for the guy that looks like I wanna be, right? And then I go for the image and then I start repairing and then it's like I gotta be strong in these ways, I gotta talk in these ways, I have to play the part that society sees and this is the image that I aspire for. This is the image that I aspire for, but it's healthy, it's beautiful, it's not self-hate, but it is. Right? And this is what's so crazy about this industry is almost nobody does it absent from that template of look at me, look at how amazing I am, look at how awesome I am, look at how many followers I have, look at how many people like my stuff and this is my self-esteem. And you can say it's cliche for that to not be good, but that's not just not good. That is an act of hatred because it's a denial of yourself. If you only are to gain you know, popularity, expression, or these types of results from, from being yourself, that's the only way it could be seen as an act of self-love or pure expression. And then when you really get to it, when we're fulfilled by what's gonna fulfill us, whatever that is, you know, like, I'm happy with my body. Okay, and I'm happy with my body and I'm healthy because you could be happy with your body in the image of society and looking good but you're on steroids or you're starving yourself and you fucked it up just so you can have a six pack or those types of things. But I'm happy with my body and this is who I am, you know, and, and I'm a healthy person. I'm happy with my mind. I'm happy with my life and this is who I am. It's an expression. I'm healthy with that. I'm happy with my social life, my sex life, but I'm healthy with those things, right? where so many times we're picking the opposite of what these things are so that we can be that. In that, man, we're all, we're all living this disease, you know, or we're all living in this mindset of like, fuck, I can't look at myself. I don't wanna look at myself, so I'm gonna manifest this other thing. And it's really terrible. You know, we've, we've cultivated a group of men and a group of women. Like, it's so funny, my friend sent me this thing. She goes, she goes, uh, like the good woman, the bad woman. Uh, the good woman is like saying whatever good thing. It's one of these mean things. <laughs> and the bad woman is like money and dicks. And then with, with the good man, like we see it as this image, right? Of stoic, of strong, of power. And then it distorts into like power over how much respect, how much intimidation do we have? How much of, of you know, what people are scared of us that they have to listen to us. This is what our interpretation of male power is. This is what that is, and it comes from this industry. It comes from this grossness that we look at in society of, of not being able to come to terms with who we are. And this is what we say yes to, and this is what we, we essentially come to worship. This is what we long for, you know? Rather than looking at the men or women or whatever it is that can hold on to the true stoicism, Right? Not just hold up the image of not having pain or you know, taking the higher road, but, but living the life, living the full range of your emotions, living the full range of your reality so that you can find the peace within you so that when tension comes, you don't have to react. You don't have to overthink and get into that true masculinity. You know, this is one of those things where masculinity is different 
takes on a very different face than femininity when we enter into those points of tension and power, you know, or tension and pain. You know, when man gets hit with that, when life falls apart, it's only the man who has experience in himself that can be calm in that. Other than that, it's just an act. So back to this whole thing of helping people and coaching. The virtue in helping people, the virtue in it, the result that you should get from this is becoming more human, more sane more, for lack of a better term, common with everybody. That doesn't mean mediocre. That means great through ordinary, right? That means being extraordinary through the ordinary. The dark side of help in service to other people is that of pure selfishness, which let me rephrase that because selfishness is not always bad in this. Sometimes you do it only for yourself, but you achieve selflessness through a selfish act of trying to help yourself. But where I see it is, is this selfishness of self-promotion, of narcissism, of being better, of the demand to be worshipped and the demand to be liked. I'm going to tell you right now, I think about all that stuff. You know, that matters to me. But nothing, nothing matters more than what happens to the people that step through my door and really work with me. And there's certain people that, you know, conflict, it doesn't necessarily work in that way. But man, nothing matters more than the person who wants to work on themselves and is willing to work on themselves. And man, that is sad that we don't have enough of that. And this is really where I think more coaches in this industry should take part in learning what true service is. True service that was done you know, for, that is done for millennia through religion, through humanitarian work, through all these different things that we see over and over again. Because what you're gonna get out of that true service is the end goal is never to be better than somebody else, but to realize that we're really truly all in this together. And the, the more I can do that, the more I realize I'm human, the more I realize I'm man, and the more I realize that I'm a grounded individual in this way. In any case, what do we do with all of this? Man, we have a community here. Reach out to somebody. You know, what do we do with all of this? Talk to somebody face to face and have an experience with them. What do we do with all this? When somebody has pain, when you have pain, pick up the phone and call somebody. And if you do want to work on it, and if you do want to get into this thing, which that I've built, that is a capitalistic venture that takes money, that offers a service, that, that does something for people, check out Men's Development Excellence or get started with the Rebuild, which is a super affordable price where you can get started in being a part of those communities. But one of the things that was very important for me in all of this is that you are paying for a service. You're not paying for a celebrity. You're not paying for what you're paying will deliver whatever money to get rid of the quick fix. You're paying for a service of what people do and what we do. And, and I, I think that's very important for people to understand when it comes to personal development and to change. All right. Later. Seeking.